Today's lesson we're going to look at scalar and vector quantities and what that actually means in physics. Um, and so if we have a look here at uh, these different um, these different amounts of things, so we've got like mass is 100 grams, um, a time, age and temperature. These are all examples of a scalar quantity. And the thing that makes them a scalar quantity and not a vector quantity is the fact that they only have magnitude. Okay, they don't have any sort of direction. In fact, these wouldn't make sense with a direction. Okay, so scalar quantities have a magnitude only. Vector quantities have a magnitude and a direction. Um, examples of vector quantities would be um, velocity, so if we had a velocity of um, 50 kilometers per hour and let's say we're talking about a car and the car was traveling east, that is a vector quantity. And the reason it's a vector quantity and not a scalar is because it has this direction here. All right, another example um, would be displacement. So if someone um, walked 20 metres um, northwest, then because it has this direction, this is a vector quantity. Um, one more example would be acceleration. So let's say um, that a car accelerated at um, 30 metres per second per second, and it was travelling in the direction of south. Now, because it's got a direction, that makes it a vector quantity. When we're representing vectors, we use an arrow, and the arrow has a head and a tail. Okay, so this part here of the arrow is the tail, and we would say that the tail is our starting point. So if, we, if this arrow was representing um, the displacement of somebody walking from home somewhere else, this would be where they started from home. So this is our starting point. Uh, and this is the head of the vector. So this is the, the finishing point. Now the size of the arrow itself also indicates um, the size of the vector. So if this was here representing that something traveled um, for, I don't know, 40 meters, then you would expect that an arrow of half the size would be representing about 20 meters. Okay, so the actual size or length of the arrow indicates how far or how big the vector is. Um, but remember, a vector means that it has to have direction. And so often you'll see vectors um, represented as part of a north, south, and east, west symbol here. So if this is north, then you might actually see the vector represented like this. Okay, and that would indicate that the direction here is northeast. Now, we could also have um, multiple directions in one journey. So you know that if you were to drive somewhere, you would take multiple turns and head in different directions. Um, when we represent that, we actually join the heads and the tails. So let's say that here was the starting position, okay, um, and the car traveled northeast for a while, and then um, it decided to uh, turn and travel um, south. Okay, we would then add our arrow here to indicate that part of the journey that changed direction. Okay, and again, the length of the arrow would indicate um, how, how far that, that car traveled in that particular direction before potentially changing again. Okay, so when we represent vectors, it's important to remember that we use an arrow, um, that there's a tail and a head of the arrow. The size of the arrow is important. In fact, often you'll also see it with a scale. Okay, so let's say that this was our, um, our, our vector here. You might have a scale up here that says that, um, you know, one centimeter equals 10 meters. Okay, rather than, than writing it next to the arrow. Um, so it's important to remember that it is it, you are drawing drawing to scale, um, and and that we also need to show direction with our vectors as well.